August 2022 by Pastor Simon James. Greetings in the name of Jesus and welcome to Riverside Tabernacle. I'm Pastor Simon and it's my honor to share God's word with you tonight. We trust you will find this message inspiring and uplifting. May you be receptive to the voice of the Blessed Holy Spirit. At the outset of this broadcast, I'd like you to, I call, I ask you to like the video and share it because it works well for the algorithm with YouTube so they will publish it more often and more people will see it. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, we ask you for your mercies upon today's so the sermon, Lord, we know that the message is from you, and I pray, O oh Lord, that you'll give, give us grace as we broadcast this message. And Father, that you will use us tonight, and that you, even as your children listen to your word, yes. that they will hear the word that the Holy Spirit wants them to hear. Yes. We ask this in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Our scripture reading for tonight is taken from the book of Mark. The first chapter in verses 40 to 42. And a leper came to him, imploring him and kneeling, said to him, If you will, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, he stretched out his hand and touched him and said, I will be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him and he was made clean. Tonight's meeting is, uh, tonight's sermon is called The Outcast, and it's to do with Jesus healing a leper. Lepers, Gentiles, slaves, and women were considered outcasts by many Jewish people in Jesus' day, especially the Pharisees. Lepers were more so because they were not only social outcasts, but health outcasts as well. Lepers were forced to live outside the city gate, apart from others. And they had to cry, unclean, unclean, when, when others approached. So that the others, the, the people that were well, would not be defiled. Now further to the threat of disease, lepers could not worship in the synagogue or get involved in any worship. They were ceremoniously also unclean. Now during Jesus' ministry, a leper came up to him one day. He knelt before him and asked for healing. Now this man was not supposed to come near a healthy person. The leper had broken the rules imposed on him and his kind. He had violated the civil code by approaching a healthy person. He also violated the religious code even though he did not know it. He worshipped God in an unclean state. He did not know Jesus was God. But anyway, he came to this God and under normal circumstances, he would not be allowed in the synagogue because of his disease. Now to break the rules and approach Jesus being a leper certainly took a whole lot of courage or desperation. His actions were evidence of a great faith, of his great faith, that Jesus could heal him. He had heard the accounts of healing by this traveling rabbi. And he knew that if this itinerant teacher wanted, he could heal him. He had known from other people's testimonies that Jesus had the power to heal all kinds of diseases. The leper lived on the outer fringes of society. He had a death sentence over himself because leprosy in those days was a death sentence. And he was forced and forgot to leave the city, to live outside. Forgotten by the society he once lived in and contributed to. He lived off charity and the food that he could forage for in the city dump. He was a man without help, without hope, and without love. His was a life of loneliness, pain, with his only escape being a painful and lonelier eventual death. Then he heard of Jesus and his life was changed in the twinkling of an eye. For those of you who do not know, leprosy is a disease that we call it Hansen's disease nowadays. It's a disease that is caused by a bacteria or bacterium and it affects the extremities of your body and the appendages. And what happens is when this bacteria infiltrates your body, 
they, you tend to lose sensation in your extreme parts of your body like your fingers, your toes, your nose, your ears. It also affects the eyes and your body gets injured and it falls off. Pieces of your body fall off as your body rots away. And this is what this leper had. He had leprosy. And in those days, leprosy was not curable like it is now if caught early. In those days, leprosy was a death sentence. If you had leprosy, you had to leave your family. You had to leave the place you lived in, leave your home, your children. And you were cast out away from human beings to live a lonely, hopeless, painful life. Now this man, he had heard of Jesus. The rabbi was healing people of all kinds of diseases in the Judean countryside and faith began to stir in his heart something started to happen in his heart every time you heard a story of how Jesus had healed somebody who was ill how Jesus had healed a blind man how Jesus had made a lame to walk again faith started stirring in his heart you know faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God and he started to believe he started to put his hope in Jesus he started to believe that Jesus, this itinerant teacher, had the power to heal even leprosy. He knew that Jesus had healed eyesight. He'd made the blind see. He'd made the dumb to talk again. He'd made the lame to walk again. And he started to believe that Jesus had the power to heal him of his leprosy. However, there was a great barrier between him and Jesus. Remember, he was a social outcast. He was a religious outcast. He couldn't approach Jesus. If he approached Jesus, he probably would get stoned. If he approached any person, let alone Jesus, he expected that the people would, would, would frighten him away, would chase him away. But there was something about this teacher. This teacher not only spoke with authority, but he also demonstrated his authority over diseases, evil spirits and death. But more than that, he seemed to have something that was missing among the local rabbis that he had known. This rabbi, Jesus, had compassion. This rabbi, Jesus, had a heart to heart connection with the people that he preached to. Now the, the leper had heard of the story of, Le, of Naaman the leper being healed by the word of God's prophet Elisha centuries before. And this Jesus, in terms of his power, he reminded him of Elisha. He reminded him of Elijah. But even more than that, he realized that this man Jesus had much more power than those men had. And even though he did not recognize Jesus as God, he didn't know Jesus was God. The leper knew that someone greater than Elisha had come. Someone greater than Moses had arrived and he just had to get to Jesus. And as he heard of Jesus' miracles, his faith increased to the point where he decided he had to break the rules to get to Jesus. Never mind that he was an outcast. Never mind that he might be uh, prosecuted for it never mind that he might be stoned or beaten he had to meet Jesus or die trying there was nothing else for him he was in a hopeless situation but Jesus presented hope and tonight Jesus is presenting hope to us so this leper plucked up the courage he ran to Jesus he fell in front of him on his knees and he begged him to heal him. He said to Jesus these profound words, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. You see, he believed Jesus had the power to heal, but he was not sure if Jesus would heal him. He knew that he was unclean. He knew that he was ceremoniously unclean. And a ceremoniously unclean person had to be declared clean by a, uh, uh, by a priest and he knew that he was unclean and as a ceremoniously unclean person he couldn't take part in the 
worship ceremonies in the synagogue. So he said, Lord, if you will, it's up to you, Lord. If you want to, you can make me bitter. But it's up to you. I believe you can. But you, I'm not sure if you want to do it. You see, many of us feel like this. We know that the Lord has the power to help us. We know that the Lord has the power to heal our situation, to fix our situation, to rectify what is wrong in our life. But we sometimes not sure whether God wants to heal us. We know the Lord has the power to help. But would Jesus want to heal an unclean person? Would Jesus want to extend grace to an outcast? That is what went through this man's mind. He knew he was dealing with the religiously superior person. And he was an unclean person. He was somebody whose place was outside the city gates. And here he was coming to ask some, a rabbi, a teacher of the word, a teacher of the scriptures, ask him for healing. And the outcasts then heard the words of Jesus. When Jesus spoke and Jesus said, he looked at him with compassion in his eyes and he said, I am willing. I am willing to heal you. I want to heal you. You're also a child of God. I want to heal you. And then he looked at him and he said, be clean. He didn't say be healed. He said, be clean. Because the cleansing or the healing from Jesus goes beyond just the healing or the cleansing of the body. It is also a cleansing of the soul. He said, I will be clean. You see, he was also addressing the leper's question, which was, am I clean enough to be healed, Lord? Am I clean enough to approach you? I am unclean in the sight of the other rabbis and the other synagogue leaders the chief priests and the scribes and the Pharisees. Now am I unclean in your sight? But please, if you can have mercy upon me, heal me. And he knew that Jesus was different when he saw Jesus. Because Jesus said, I am willing. I don't care if you're unclean in the sight of man. To me, you're a precious soul. And you, my brother, you, my sister, tonight, if you feel that you are too unclean, for the power of Jesus to touch you, let me tell you tonight, as Jesus has said here, these are the words of Jesus. I am willing, be clean. I want you to be clean. Jesus was willing to heal. If the leper was, was uncertain of Jesus' words, his eyes shone with love and compassion. He could and he would heal the leper. The outcast heard the words of Jesus. He saw the compassion in the Lord's eyes. He felt the touch of his hand on his body. And he perceived the power that went through his entire body. Something had happened. In the twinkling of an eye, something had happened. He looked at his hands. He felt his face. He was healed. His hands, the skin was new. The fingers had returned. The, ed the ends of the fingers that had broken off. The, the, the unsightly, discolored fingernails were all normal again. His ear, where the lobes had fallen off, was all better. The nose, which was half eaten away, was now all better. He knew that he was healed. He knew that he had been healed by Jesus. In fact, Jesus had recreated him. The Bible says we are new creatures in Jesus Christ. The old is past. The new is, is come. The Lord Jesus Christ has extended grace to the outcast. He extended his grace to this outcast. This man to whom no one else wanted to extend grace. Yes, lepers were considered total outcasts. They were considered unclean. They were considered worse than vermin. But the grace of Jesus extended beyond the boundaries of society and religion. Yes, the law of Moses said that this man could not come to the synagogue. This man could not approach the priest except to check whether he is, his uh, leprosy is healed. But Jesus had 
extended his grace or his grace extends beyond any boundary, any barrier set by man or set by religion. Christianity is not a religion. It is a way of life. It is a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus extended this relationship. He didn't extend religion to this man. He didn't ex ex uh, extend rituals to this man. He extended love. He extended compassion. Jesus looked at the leper not as an outcast, but as a child of God in dire need of help. Hope and healing. Jesus saw the soul beyond the deformed body of the man kneeling in front of him. When Jesus saw this deformed man kneeling in front of him, his hair was falling out, his skin was full of lesions and discolored, he was dirty. Jesus saw beyond all that outward appearance. Jesus saw a soul in dire need of help, hope, and healing. The leper did not need to get well to come to Jesus. He came to Jesus to get well. Too many times people want to sort their lives out before coming to Jesus. This leper could have said, I'll wait till I'm clean. Till a priest says I'm clean before going to Jesus. But he went to Jesus in the state that he was in. Many people want to sort their lives out. They say to you, I have this certain habit that's between me and God. I ha I'm doing certain thing that, you know, it keeps me away from God. I need to sort this out first, then I'll come to Jesus. And they fail hopelessly. You cannot change yourself. The Bible is clear. A leopard cannot change his spots. Neither can an Ethiopian change the color of his skin. You cannot change yourself. Jesus will do that for you. You need to come to Jesus as you are. You need to come to Jesus as the leper came to Jesus. And when the leper came to Jesus, that was the last time he was a leper. From then on, he was somebody new. Today or tonight, we are all lepers in some way or another. We all have some sickness or some problem affecting us. Something, some condition, where maybe a social condition, maybe a physical condition, maybe a financial condition. Whatever this condition is, it has deformed us to the extent that one cannot see our true nature. One cannot see the true person in us. We have become bitter. Our outlook on life has become discolored. We have become crippled. We have lost use of our hands. Our full potential is not being realized. And we are forced to live a life that we would not want to live. That we do not want to live. But because of circumstances we have to. Some of us have become so bitter and so angry, so temperamental. That we are social outcasts in our own home. That we cannot relate to anybody. Some of us have become so hardened. That we cannot accept God. We cannot accept God's children. If they're not perfect, then we do not accept them. If they don't do what we want them to do, then we, they're not, we cannot accept them. Some of us are, feel too ashamed to come to Jesus. Some of us feel so imperfect, so unclean and dirty that we do not even want to come to Jesus. We have become financial, social, emotional or spiritual lepers in dire need of a healing touch. In dire need of a turning point in our lives. This is your turning point. This is your turning point. The day that you accept. The moment that you accept that you are a leper of some sort. We are worse than lepers really. Because our problems are more than skin deep. Our problems don't affect the body only, it affects the soul. Our problems have made us lepers. Our habits have made us lepers. Our issues have made us lepers. And we are looking at a life of failure, of pain, loneliness and even death. There is an even worse malady or ailment than leprosy or cancer. It is called sin. And it is a sickness that is ruining our life. It is a single most deadly disease that mankind 
could contract. It's called sin. It is destroying our souls and we are facing a hopeless eternity without Jesus. And sin is a disease that does not end at death. At least if you die, your leprosy is gone. Your diabetes is finished. But sin is a disease that follows you into eternity if not forgiven. And now is your turning point. Today is your time to turn to Jesus and be cleansed. Today is the time that you as a leper, as a spiritual leper, as a person who is diseased by sin or a person who has any other disease, social problems, financial problems, relational problems, emotional problems. Today is the day that Jesus will cleanse you. But you have to accept that you are in that situation. That leper had to accept that he didn't have the answers. He had to accept that no one on this world, in this world or on this earth could help him. He had come to the point where no pastor could help him, no doctor could help him. He realized that. And the sooner you realize that, that sin is deeper than skin deep. Skin as a sin is worse than cancer or leprosy. And even the problems that you have, which are holding you back from serving God, from loving God, from loving your friends and neighbors. It's time to let it go. It's time to let Jesus heal you. You see, when Jesus touches you, his blood will cleanse you. It will justify you and it will sanctify you. It cleanses you from all sin. All the sin of the past is gone. He justifies you. He makes you just as if you never sinned. And he sanctifies you. He makes you holy and sets you apart for his use and his use alone. And you are recreated in Christ. We are new creatures in him when we receive Jesus. The old is past. All things become new. I want to talk to you for a few minutes about a divine exchange that takes place. That took place when the leper met Jesus and that will take place when you meet Jesus. When the leper came to Jesus, he was leprous. He had all these lesions on his body. He had digits of his fingers missing. Now I don't know if you've seen a leper. I have seen lepers in a colony in India. And when you go there, they warn you not to touch them. And I remember when I was there, they, the pastors in, on, in that part of the world said, Please, pastor, do not touch these people. Pray from afar. And then when I spoke to them and they came for prayer, I called them for prayer. I felt compassion on them and I touched them. Something that was unthinkable. I wasn't supposed to do that. But I touched them. Because I believe they needed a touch from God more than the fear that I had of leprosy. And this is what happened with Jesus. When this leper came before Jesus, Jesus did the unthinkable. Jesus did something that no one expected him to do. The unexpected, unthinkable surprise was Jesus reached out and touched the man. Jesus knew that he needed a touch. Imagine that first touch of a human being in all, after all those years of living a lonely life, nobody can touch you. Now you might not understand what it is not to be touched for some, for no one to shake your hand or to put their hand on your shoulder or to hug you. But Jesus knew, Jesus could have spoken the word. You remember the centurion said to Jesus, you just have to speak the word and my servant will be healed. But Jesus knew that this man needed more than just the word. He needed a touch. And we also need to touch others. Not just pray for them remotely, but find them, speak to them, hold their hand, shake their hand, give them a hug. Let them know that the love of Jesus still prevails. The love of Jesus lives on in you. And when Jesus touched this man, this man felt wanted. Jesus wasn't like the others. Will put you in isolation. The other priests, 
The moment you had something leprous, they'd put you in isolation for seven days. And then you would come and they would look at you and they see it isn't gone. They put you back in isolation. And you could be in a lockdown for the rest of your life like this man was. But Jesus broke the rules for this man. Jesus broke the rules. He touched him. And when Jesus touched the leper, something phenomenal happened. There was a transfer. There was an exchange between himself and the leper. And the moment of contact between Jesus' hand and the leper's body, leprosy transferred from the man to Jesus and healing transferred from Jesus to the man. The leper became a man again. The moment Jesus touched him, Jesus and drew all the leprosy out of him and filled his body with healing. The leprosy was gone. Jesus had taken it. The Bible says, Isaiah 53, 4, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yes, Jesus takes the burdens you can no longer bear. And Jesus took the pain of this man he took the ridicule of the man. He took the shame. He took the loneliness. He took the pain away from this man. And he gave him love. He gave him warmth. He gave him friendship. He gave him love. He gave him everything that a man deserves to have. A man craves to have. And of course, the leprosy didn't cling to Jesus. Because nothing can cling to Jesus. It dissipates. But the man was healed. But the love of Jesus, the healing power of Jesus clung to the man. And the Bible says that even when Jesus told this man, don't go around shouting about this. Go to the priests and show them what I've done for you. Go and show the priests. Let them examine you and declare you clean. This man didn't go to the priest, the Bible says. He didn't care. He didn't need a priest to look at him, to examine him and tell him that he was healed. He knew that he was healed because he had felt the master's hand. He had felt the touch of the master's hand on his body. On the cross, Jesus did this again. On the cross, Jesus took upon himself our sins, our troubles, all the dirt, the scum of our lives. He took it upon himself and he hung there on the cross and he got rid of it from us. He accepted our sins. He took our sin and our shame. He was our curse. He took our curses upon himself and he became a curse for us. Cursed he is he who hangs on a tree. Jesus took the curse so that you and I, outcasts, can have his grace extended to us, can, be, can inherit divine eternal life. Jesus extends his grace to the outcasts. Now is the time. The leper did not con con the, the leper did not question Jesus' ability to heal him. Like I said, all he wondered whether Jesus was going to heal him. He didn't know that Jesus was going to touch him. He didn't know that Jesus was even going to speak to him. He came before Jesus and begged him, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. And Jesus said to him, I am willing, be thou clean. Tonight, Jesus is passing by your place. I see him in the spirit standing right where you are. He is waiting for your response. He is waiting for you to run to him. He's waiting for you to come and ask him. He wants to extend his hand. He wants to reach out and touch you. He has the power to help you. He has the power to heal you. He has the power to save you. He is willing to help you. He is willing to heal you and he is willing to save you. Jesus wants to extend his grace to you, the outcast, but you need to move. You need to get up. You need to stop feeling sorry for yourself. You need to get to Jesus. You need to kneel and ask for his help and hear the words that he says to you. 
my child, I am willing, be thou clean. My grace is extended to you. No more are you the outcast. Now you are a child of the living God. I trust you've enjoyed God's word and that it has been a blessing to you. If you were inspired by it, please share it with your friends and family. Please visit our YouTube channel, like and subscribe. The more likes we get, the more subscriptions we get, the more widely YouTube will publish this message. Remember, we're live on Facebook every Wednesday at 7 p.m. and Sunday at 10 a.m. This is Pastor Simon. And as always, it has been my pleasure. Till next time, God bless.